and I welcome uh, Professor Dr. Matthias Schumann, Chair of Application Systems and eBusiness University of Göttingen. So our topic today is uh, credit management challenges in times of global uncertainty. Global uncertainty, many aspects here to uh, think about, pandemic restrictions, production shutdowns, material shortages, so a certain list what uh, happens could happen and the outcome of that. So, I would like to hand over now to Matthias. So, stage. Thank starts. you, Robert, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, to say that first, I don't want to talk about the uncertainties combined with the election from last Sunday, but perhaps the uncertainties I want to talk about are. Uh, due to some decisions made by our government throughout the last years. And I'll do that uh, based on five examples where I want to show the results of the influence for credit management and we'll sh start with some challenges and sum up with a short conclusion. If we, ladies and gentlemen, uh, look at these challenges for credit management, well, of course, I'll do that from a more or less German perspective, we of course still have the pandemic development and the economic consequences. Second is uh, in a number of industries, we see shortage of materials and at least in Germany, we see inflationary tendencies. Uh, we have industries with structural breaks, disruptions, so to say, and uh, I think since Trump, we also see that we have a changed political framework that's in place. Well, if we uh, start with these consequences, let me start with the results of the pandemic that we see today. Well, what we can say is uh, that we have a number of industries that are suffering from the pandemic. Let's say, for example, stationary retail, especially in Germany textile. Many customers move to online shopping. We have problems with tra travel agencies, seminar hotels, the entertainment industry is in trouble, uh, but also uh, not so many customers are doing cruises right now, and we will see how the airline industry will perform, especially due to uh, business travelers who probably stay more in their office and use online media instead of traveling around. But what we have to say too, that uh, some of these industries already had a structural crisis before pandemic, but that now intensified and accelerated the processes. And the uh, German government spent loans and bridging assistance and also short time allowance. And now it uh, becomes interesting what will happen after the implementation of the new government. What will happen to this support and uh, how will these companies that are in trouble in these industries perform? And what we probably might have for some of these companies too, that due to this support, we have a delayed adaption process. Therefore, it's important uh, in credit management uh, to have a closer look into these relevant industries, especially into small and medium-sized businesses, examine liquidity, liquidity, debt ratios, cash flow, and of course also the payment behavior. And for most of uh, the companies and the credit management departments, it's not only important to look into its customers, but also to have a closer look into the suppliers if they have problems and insolvency risks. Let me come to the second uh, example. The second example are uh, uh, developments that we see in the German construction industry. If you have a closer look there, we can see that uh, the price index was nearly stable throughout uh, the 20, 1995 to uh, 25, and then it increased. It increased due to the uh, low interest rates. The prices for the buildings uh, covered that, 
And if we look into the recent developments, we have a very strong increase in housing price index compared to the consumer price index. For example, the decrease in uh, 2020 is due to uh, the tax decrease that happened in 2020. And we have a very sharp increase recently. If uh, we analyze the situation, we have a strong demand in residential construction. On the other hand, only low capacity expansion in the construction industry. Uh, while prices already considered uh, the low interest rates, and you can say since uh, 2016, we all already had an increase in the uh, material prices and a sharp increase recently throughout the last year or so. Well, where are the risks? If we have advanced quotation calculations by the construction uh, companies without price escalation, it may be that uh, they offer prices under their own costs and others uh, brought a whole amount of uh, material uh, increase their stocks with, an ens with a capital commitment and credit utilization. If you look uh, into road construction in Germany, the situation is quite different. There we already have price competition uh, with low margins and high risks. And uh, if you look into the inflation rate last month, around 3.9%, uh, well, the question is how interesting, especially uh, credit management, uh, sorry, construction uh, building, especially in some market is. Maybe uh, that uh, inventory financing becomes more expensive due to rising lending rates and investors might turn away. As a result, also if you have a large number of building approvals, probably investors have no interest anymore. We have order cancellation uh, in the business starts price competition with the result of risk of insolvencies. We have to take care there. Well, I mentioned already the mat material shortage in the construction business, but this material so, uh, shortage also can be observed in other businesses. Well, what are the results? Well, we have increasing prices, and if we offer to fix prices, of course, we have higher risks. We have probably time commitments and pay penalty if we are not able to deliver, or we lose revenues. Overall, in the middle to long run, supplier credits in such a situation become more and more important. There's another bottleneck, that's the semiconductor market. There we have uh, long production times, that means from the order from a customer to the delivery that takes approximately six months. In the automotive industry, therefore, they had uh, large inventories, but then we had the downtimes as a result of the lockdown. And uh, after the uh, starting back in business in the automotive industry, they started to reduce their inventories. They late ordered uh, new chips, semiconductors, and as a result, we have this bottleneck right now. In addition, there were adjustments due to uh, US sanctions against China in the component market. We had an explosion in the Japanese chip manufacturer's company and an increase in demand due to home office, due to digitization in different markets. What are the consequences? Well, consequences are loss of sales, sales deferred penalties, higher inventories with higher capital commitment and price increase. What we have to do from a, a credit management perspective in this area, well, 
we have to look into these industries, probably by SIC codes. We have to identify companies with low cash flow and high debt ratios. And we uh, can use break-even analysis, for example, and make simulations to analyze companies that are under risk. Let me come to the fourth example, the automotive industry and the disruption that we see here. I like to focus only on one component. I want, don't want to talk about digitization in that market. Uh, I'm interested in the consequences that we move from a combustion engine to an electric motor. Well, who will be affected? Affected will be not the large suppliers, but the uh, small and middle ones in the lower le hierarchy levels of the value chain, component suppliers, individual part suppliers, uh, with conventional drive components, plastic parts, uh, foundries. In the long term, probably also the workshop area, since uh, electric uh, vehicles are simpler to ma maintenance than the combustion ones. Well, for Germany, for example, there exists an estimation about loss losses in jobs there, and uh, we estimate that approximately 450,000 jobs in uh, that business will get lost. On the other hand, well, of course, we have new jobs in the battery market, we have new jobs due to digitization, and so on and so forth. But that means for uh, credit management, also there we have to observe the relevant uh, suppliers. We have uh, to focus on the small and medium-sized enterprises. We have to observe their sales. We have to look into liquidity, debt ratios, and we have to do a step-by-step -step adjustment of their credit lines when their business turns down. But let me uh, focus on one issue that is probably a mid to long term situation that we can observe there. If you look into the number of electric cars sold in 2019 and 2020, among the 20 biggest car manufacturers in the electric car business, seven of them come from China. And I bet that the Chinese companies will be much faster having a relevant market share in the European market as well as in the American market compared to the Japanese or Korean automotive companies when they entered those markets. And I'm interested how the market will look like probably five or eight years from now. You should have an eye on that. Well, uh, not only since Trump, but uh, more and more since Trump, and also with Biden, we have to consider market foreclosure. What does that mean? Well, we have two effects. One effect is uh, if we import goods, well, we have an import duty, of course, prices raise. As a result, demand is reduced. Uh, probably if we have domestic substitutes, their, their sales will increase. A second aspect, if uh, these uh, imported goods are intermediate goods, also if we have this import tax, this import duty, prices for the final product will increase and we will have a decrease in sales. On the long term, we probably have prices of these imports that will be reduced again, but that also reduces the margin. And therefore, we have risk in this business and we have to be careful. But that is one thing that is very difficult to analyze, probably we can use country risk maps here to have a little clue for that problem. But let me show another, from my point of view, important aspect, 
that are the developments in China. Well, slowing economy, slowing down the growth of the economy as consequences for supporters to, for exporters to China as well as for Chinese companies. But most important from my point of view is that the government is changing its econo economic uh, strategy. Well, they are investing now in AI technology, for, for example, but they are not financing any more steel production, metal processing, shipbuilding, chemicals, electronic industry, and few other markets. They have to stay on their own in the global market. As a result, I think we will see for these Chinese companies, for some of them, lay payment or non-payment situations. Therefore, for Chinese companies that are in these industries, you should monitor these companies very, clear, very carefully to consider that in credit management and to consider these changes that happen there. Let me come to the conclusion with uh, five final conclusions. First, we have to anticipate more and more the economic global consequences in our credit decisions. Second, uh, it's important for us to have comprehensive and correctly maintained ma master data and also mechanisms to select relevant customer groups. Third, industry forecasts and country forecasts gain relevance within our decision. Fourth, permanent monitoring of the key figures of our customers and the monitoring of payment behavior is necessary. And fifth, and finally, in addition to customer credit worthiness, of course, we also have to have a look in this, our supplier credit worthiness. In most of the cases, of course, that's equally important. Thank you for listening. So, uh, Matthias, thank you very much for these insights and uh, the very comprehensive view. And um, sometimes uh, companies in Germany wonder uh, what happens with the credit insurers in these times and globally. Uh, what what uh, could be the supporting role of trade credit insurance? What, what's your estimation okay. of the uh, well, situation? Throughout the last crisis, 2008 to 2009, we saw that uh, the insurers downgraded to all the industries that were affected. I think they learned, and what they do is what I talked about. They look very carefully in each of these companies and analyze the companies, and they downgrade companies. And of course, they also reduce limit for these companies that are in a bad situation. They do that. Uh, with a bigger variety than they did that last, uh, last crisis. That's one thing. And the uh, second thing is, I think, uh, well, at the end, of course, if a company is in a bad liquidity situation, then they will reduce their limits too, of course. And someone who has coverage by credit insurer, well, you always have to have in mind, you also have a small portion that you pay for if the company will fight insolvency. Yeah. So, and there, there are questions again uh, regarding governmental support. What, what's your position? Should we again ask for governmental support or is that highly critical in this situation because of times of recovery? What's, what's your well, view I, on that? I think, I think in Germany, uh, governmental support already is too long for some of the companies. Well, we have to adjust with our business models to change market situations that we have in some businesses. Well, seminar mm -hmm. hotels, for example, probably must have new ideas what they do because we do online seminars. Yeah, uh, switch. And they have to switch. They have to do things different. And if they get governmental support for quite a long time, this is covered by the support and they don't move 
to new models, to new business models that are necessary. And uh, I think today you could uh, see that the unemployment rate in Germany reduced this month too. But however, what we see too is uh, that we still have two and a half million people or even more in uh, short time allowance. Hmm. And if that is quit, we'll see what will happen with this job. Yeah. So I think that was a great uh, insight. And uh, of course, in each country, it, it's uh, being evaluated uh, what, what uh, support or uh, even not support uh, of uh, further uh, developments in uh, the uh, economy is needed. So therefore, I think that was a great estimation here. And thank you very much.